by August this year, 2023, guys, it will be six years, six, that my mom retired from working for the government of Nigeria and no, her pensions, gratuity, whatever it is that was saved up, you know, in her um, retirement savings account has not been worked on. She has not been paid a dime. So caring for her and my eight father, my father is actually 80 in December this year, and have entirely been on us, the children. And that is typical of a lot of families across Africa and across the world sometimes, especially in Nigeria. And that made me begin to think, how am I going to cope after all this hard work? blogging, writing books, training people, moving around every city, training people, empowering people where I know, talking to men on my other channel, creating men movement, helping family stand, doing YouTube, talking to you, sharing with you my vulnerabilities, my money goals and my money um, strategies, my research. And then I become 60 and 65 and 70. And then I can't possibly travel all like I wanted to do, for instance, or I can't do some of the things I'm doing right now as a young woman. And then what happens to me? That is what influenced this video. If you're interested in learning or you know, share, uh, hearing me share with you key steps that I'm taking and I want you to take to be able to retire and live happily and catered for, then this is your video. Keep watching. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you four things I think you should do, just like I'm planning to do, or I've already started to do, when it comes to planning and investing for your golden years. Because when I clock 50, 60, girl, all I want to do is keep doing what I love to do, like making videos, because I really love to share. I really want to. I really want to see people better, right? And I want to tour the world. Those plane tickets, those five-star hotels, are not going to be paid for by just wishing, right? It's not by wishful thinking. I'm going to pick up those bills. I'm not going to speak on world stages just by not being able to afford even internet data. That's not going to happen, and that shouldn't happen to you as well. So many times we are deceived. I call it the, the deception of youth. The, the strength we have as young people have a way of making us feel, you know, like everything's going to be all right, like we're on top of the world. This strength will not always be there. I remember how I used to feel before I clocked 40. It's exactly not how I'm feeling now that I'm in my 40s, right? The same way, I am not kidding myself anymore that I'm going to be feeling this way at 50, at 60, and onwards, right? And planning and investing for my golden years is something that I cannot but do. So the first thing I think you can do if you want to come on this journey with me is number one. Understand that the earlier we start planning for retirement, the better. God, imagine I started planning to retire at when I was 20, for instance. And when I may retire, let's take the age of, say, 65. So I would have had 45 years to plan. I would have 45 years to keep saving away a particular amount till 65 and that's going to be tangible than now that I'm already 42 I just have about 18 before 60 and then another five which is 23 years so the amount of money I would have spent if I was on my 20 like to contribute yeah assuming I bring out like 5k a month to contribute in a in the retirement savings account for instance and I do that over a period of 45 years. The money that I'm going to accumulate will not be the same. Like if I decide to do the same 7K or rather the same 5K from now that I'm 42 till I'm 65. Now, that brings me to the second point. How much do you know you need as at when you're 65 that, you, that can keep you comfortable living your dream life without going broke? without becoming dependent. That's another thing to consider. You know, looking at inflation and everything, it can be so uncertain and crazy thinking about it. But that's the second thing you need to do. Like how much should we save up before we are 65, whether we're working in nine to five job or we're doing our own business that we want to have in our account reserved 
for us still uh, we are 65 that we sh we are sure that despite the inflation or whatever is still going to be relevant to help us assume we can't even work anymore to help us live in our golden years comfortably how much we need to sit down and put pen to paper to say this is how much at least i should have when i am 65 that's the second thing to do and you know that when you're thinking about this second thing to do Apart from even inflation and all, you have to think of healthcare, right? So we may be needing, not even may, I mean, we'll be needing more healthcare. We'll need more well-being packages. We'll need, you know, our lifestyle preferences which will change. So the budget that we're looking at must be able to cater to these things. Okay, in a country like mine, we have insurance run by private organization and stuff and by government, if probably you're working with the government, but it's not anything that is, you know, compulsory or mandatory that every citizen has. So you see, it's a bit unstructured. So you can't depend on luck or on God forbid, or God will not allow me to do that. That is not a strategy, right? The third thing we need to do if we are going to plan and invest to live our golden years in style without going broke is to ensure that we are working with a financial advisor. I remember the last time we made withdrawals from our children's education fund and we went to make some payments in the um, first bank in Nigeria. And then we were approached by their, um, what do you call that now? Their educational um, insurance you know, arm. And, you know, well, their rates looks, you know, almost the same with the company that we're already working with. But it struck me that, okay, there are quite a number of financial advisors. We are not lacking financial advice. So it's just for us to open up, ask the right questions, go to the right people and get the only information we need. So for retirement savings, in Nigeria, we have what we call the retirement savings account. I actually used to work in the pension um, between 2008 and 2009, just like a year as a data officer and then eventually as a risk management officer, the first actually for of that company. So I understand a bit of how this works. And I also know there's a, a program also for people who may not be in the contributive scheme. The contributive scheme is where 7.5% so is deducted from your salary every month to contribute to your account. Then your employer also adds 7.5, making it 15%. Um, I know that is a standard and that is a, is a must for organizations in Nigeria who at least have employed up to five people. Those five people must have those, um, must have pension covered and some other things like health and stuff. But I know there is also a program for those who, who just want to do it, like individuals who just want to run the account by themselves. They might not be working in any government or private organization. There's something they call it, I'm trying to remember, <laughs> just something that says, you know, you intentionally want to save for your retirement. This is a good time to find about that. I actually are uh, reading up about it. If you want that video, let me know. I'm going to do a whole video talking about how the Nigerian um, retirement savings account works and some other investment packages somebody can take advantage of your retirement. But that's outside the scope of this video. But let me know if you want that video in the comments and I'll make it. And that's because I am in Nigeria, so I can only talk for the one I know. I know for those who are in the US, you have the 41, um, 401 um, form, right? Um, you also have the IRA, of course, and all of those. Please go find out, get, make sure you know about this and make sure you take advantage of them early. I wish I knew I started at 20, like I told you. I wouldn't have been in so much of a rush. Like right now, I'm like, I need to do this really fast. There, there's so much I, I think I see, I just need to do really fast. And it can, the anxiety is not... It's not healthy, so I just have to learn to manage myself to say, okay, what was I thinking all this year? It's only in my 30s, if, in fact, what was I thinking all in my 30s and I didn't think about it? I know um, a couple of times when I was working in pension, we are made to buy like, you know, shares and stuff, but I kept saying, I know I'm not going to be here for a long time. I don't want to climb the ladder of financial um, industry. I wanted media, so I left. And I always had it in the back of my mind, like, I'm going to set up my... I'm so trying to remember that name. Um, the account, the retirement service account, where you do it on your own, you know, no employer contributing for you. You're just putting out a, a certain amount of money every month on your own till you're retired. And I never got to do it. It's crazy, guys. So um, what I'm saying is look for financial advisor 
and arm yourself with the right information and act. Act, you know, really. I have also done some investments that I ended up not reinvesting in them, which is also not a good financial plan. So whatever that it is that we do, we're talking retirement now, make sure we begin to get money aside for those golden years so that they don't become rainy days or emergency days and all of that. There's also um, um, a research I'm doing about the different kinds of accounts that we actually need to keep, you know, to help us, you know, save. I use uh, my Piggyvest account, you know I'm such a Piggyvest ambassador if you ask me, and it is such a lifesaver, but I think we can go and do much more. Most of you also followed me to sign up in that um, app. You can save, you can safe lock, you can have money that you can withdraw without any interest. You can have your money saved and you only can withdraw it at a particular time of the year or different times of the year. You can buy in, uh, you can buy dollars, you can convert and save your money in dollars, other currency. You can also um, buy, like invest in real actual businesses like farms, rice farms, you know, motorcycle businesses, motorcycle businesses, you know, all kinds of various things. It's such an amazing app. It has saved us. <laughs> you don't want to know. I've talked about this in another video. So whatever it is, those kind of apps can also be used to save out money for our um, RSA, our retirement service account. But beyond that, we need to have diversified portfolios. That's what I'm saying. And only a financial advisor can actually give you the heads up on the best thing and the best way to go, right? And guys, the fourth thing, which is the final for this point, that we must do if you're going to retire, living a good lifestyle, you know, all that, is that we must begin to manage our debts right now and our estate accounts. Now, whatever you are doing, if you're owing people, you're owing organizations, institutions, individuals, you can't really lift your head above water. You can't really say for a sure that this is how much I have. Because if you have, let's say, $10,000 somewhere and you're owing people over $7,000, you don't really, you, you don't own $10,000, right? And that brings me to the fact that, first of all, in be able to overcome debt, which is another topic I'm going to do on its own, you must be able to be realistic about managing the debt that you owe whether they're from credit cards, whether they're from business loans, they're from family loans, whatever it is, you make sure you start paying them off really fast so that you don't want to get into retirement and you have debt to pay. I have seen a lot of people who even die with the debt and then the debt is transferred to their family members and their children are burdened with them. It's not, it's not happening, you know, because you're a member of this family, it's not going to happen. And nobody's talking about the fact that being in debt doesn't even give you rest of mind. So it's something I don't want, I don't like to play with at all, right? I've never taken a loan from a bank in my life. I mean, it's not even easy to get, right? So debt management is key so that you are realistic about what your money goals are, what you're saving and what you actually own. I think these are the four major steps to starting to think comprehensively about retiring early, not early, but retiring, retiring well, planning and investing for your future so that old age doesn't meet you anyhow. There's something I discovered, this and I call it deception of youth. I still feel like the way I almost used to feel when I was 21, 19. And until you arrive at 60, you may not discover that there's certain things that are open to you. I remember years back, um, there's certain empowerment program that are made for youth and some of them always have the cut-off age of 35. I remember a particular program I kept you know, applying for, which was a Mandela Fellowship. I remember the year I applied, two years before I had applied twice, I wasn't taking. The third year I was to apply, it was when it dawned on me that I clocked 35 that year and I felt my chances were really low. So when they didn't take me, I remember the next year I was really angry because I was 35. In my mind I was like, get it, she get out. They should get after I don't meet the criteria anymore, you know. And it don't dawn on me that wait, that's the you know, like the age limit for youth. So I'm no longer like a typical youth, I'm not between the 18 and 35 brackets. That's the same way poverty will come on people and then they realize that oh my god, what have I done with my youth? That can be us, that can be you, that can be myself. So, with this brief overview, I think that I have been able to put it in your mind. That it's time to think retirement, no matter how old you are listening to me, even if you're already 65, it doesn't matter. Then what matters is you are beginning the journey to becoming not a dependent, but taking the 
um, the control of your finance. And that's if you're still earning a, li a little bit or you have a skill, even if the skill is to make people laugh, even if the skill is to do voiceovers, things that don't have to stress you physically. There are opportunities everywhere. And that's why I share a lot of opportunities here on the channel. There's so many things you can do as long as you are alive. You can always start a new career anytime. Retirement planning is so key. And until you come your way again, let me know what else you want me to talk about so we can delve into this topic fully. I have a lot of experience in managing my parents, pension and all that and what I'm doing currently to get there. Alright, so until you come your way again, don't forget to go back to think about how to start and why you should start now because the earlier you start, the less money you invest, you put away every, every month. But the older you are, you have to put much more money to meet your money goal. Coming to number two, you need to have a money goal. Like how much realistically do I have to, do I need to have banked already before I'm 65 or 60, depending on when you want it, that will make sense for me to cover healthcare and all that I need for old age, right? Number three, you have to look for a financial advisor, right? And finally, you have to make sure that you are thinking about clearing any debts, any estates, whatever that is hanging here and there because you can't really be building wealth when what you think you have doesn't belong to you. Okay, catch ya.